following program is brought to you in living color. College Report. Each week recording an interesting and informative event from the campus of one of the liberal arts colleges belonging to the independent colleges of Southern California. This week on College Report, Biography of a College, a program commemorating the 70th anniversary of Laverne College. Hosting this special program will be motion picture star Don Murray. Our special guests include Dr. Harold Fosnock, president of Laverne College. C. Ernest Davis, former Laverne president. Former professors George Hollenberg and Gladys Muir. Presidential assistant J. O. Hildegard Fisherman. The college song, Guide of Laverne, is sung by the College Glee Club. I'm Don Murray. Today we're going to tell you a story. We're going to use old films and some wonderful old pictures and some very interesting present-day live personalities to tell you the history of Laverne College, which is right outside of Los Angeles here in California. Now, just a few weeks ago, to bring us up to the present, I was on the campus. And I was playing, well, a rather different kind of a role for me. I was sort of an uncle and a big brother and friend to an incoming freshman. Her name was Hildegard Vischerman. And Hildegard is right here with us today. Hildegard, would you like to tell the people how it come that we uh, know each other and how we became brothers and sisters? Well, we met at 1953, and my father is in Kassel, a youth welfare worker, and you helped him at this time and so you lived in our family and you became my big brother. <laughs> well, I think I should explain to the people that I was in Germany serving with the Brethren Voluntary Service Program. This is the service program of the Church of the Brethren, which is the same denomination that founded Laverne College. Now, Brethren Voluntary Service, or BVS, as we like to call it, is something like the Peace Corps, only it's under the auspices, of course, of the church instead of the government. Well, while living in Germany with the Wischermann family, I spent my regular week working days uh, working as a laborer, helping to, believe, to build the Castle House, which was the center of the Brethren Service relief activities in Germany. But on weekends, I was with Herr Wischermann, Hildegard's father, and we were giving old leadership to youth groups and young sports organizations there in Germany. Well, now I'm back in America, and... Uh, I've become a motion picture actor, and Hildegard has grown up and is no longer my little sister, but she's a grown young lady now. So I took the opportunity to invite Hildegard to come to America and to study at this wonderful college in Laverne. Now, after about a half hour drive from Los Angeles, Hildegard and I drove up in front of Laverne College campus. 
President Fasnacht was right there to greet us. And we soon found that Hildegard was not the only foreign student on the campus, nor was I the only ex bvser on the campus. Dr. Fasnacht had alerted some people he wanted us to meet, and we were given the grand tour. Our first stop was Woody Hall to meet the Ballardis, house parents of this men's dormitory. Joanne had interrupted her studies at Laverne to join BVS, and like myself, she was assigned to Germany. She worked in Berlin in a center that received refugees from the East Zone, a business which has fallen off in recent months. In Berlin, she met Chris Ballardi, the son of a German pastor. He returned with her to Laverne, and they were married last summer. Joanne has now graduated and is teaching school in Ontario, while Chris finishes his BA. On our way to the library, we met Paul Baum, dean of the college. Dean Baum had brought along Gudrun Thaling to meet Hildegard. Gudrun is from Göttingen, Germany, and needless to say, Hildegard was very happy to see her. Now, somehow the girls managed to restrict themselves to English while they were with us. <laughs> Gudrun is on campus as an exchange student from Göttingen University. And in addition to trading students back and forth, Dean Baum told us that he himself had spent a semester or so in Göttingen as an exchange professor. An additional proof that this small campus is getting more worldwide every year was supplied when we learned that Laverne and five other Brethren colleges are cooperating in a junior year abroad program. Students selected for this adventure will spend their junior year at the University of Marburg. Now here, as we went up to Founders Hall, we found the dean-elect history professor, Herbert Hogan. He recently made two trips to Nigeria where he assisted the Nigerian tr Christians in making an intensive study of the role of the church in that rapidly growing nation. I thought we'd just about met everybody then, then, by then, but our uh, tour was just beginning. See, all over the campus we ran into fascinating professors and very interesting students. The whole place had a, an air of being alive with excitement and creativity. And when I asked anybody about the early development of Laverne College, they would say, well, Ernest Davis told us a story once about, and then they'd tell us something very fascinating. So we decided to get the history of Laverne firsthand. So we asked Dr. Davis to come here tonight, today to speak to us. Hello, Dr. Davis. Hello. Tell me, when was it that you first entered Laverne? I first came as an academy sophomore. The, uh, after graduation, I returned at intervals and finally emerged with two college degrees and two years' experience as an academy teacher. Mm -hmm. Later on, I served for a time as a member of the Board of Trustees, and then from 1938 to 1948, I was the president of the institution. Well, can you... Tell us something about the beginnings of Laverne College. I'll be happy to, uh, Mr. Murray. Of course, it was uh, Le Lordsburg Academy that I entered in 1910. The college was named after the town, and that name was changed to Laverne in 1917. But uh, to understand Laverne, you must understand at least something of the Church of the Brethren, which uh, founded the college. The Church of the Brethren was organized back in 1708 by a small group of laymen who had broken off from the state churches of Germany. Within a very few years, practically the whole group picked up and sailed for the New World in search of religious refuge and freedom as a part of William Penn's holy experiment. Thus the Brethren, or Dunkers as they were called, became one of the small sects inhabiting the rich farmlands of Pennsylvania Dutch country. Some of the Brethren were not completely happy in Pennsylvania, so following the Revolutionary War, many of them became a part of the migration to the western frontier. The last phase of this uh, expansion came during the late 1800s and the early 1900s. One Brethren colony settled in the New Citrus area around Covina and Lordsburg, California, an undeveloped town site. 
named after its promoter, I.W. Lord. After moving from one coast to the other, the brethren slowly began to move out of their earlier isolation and sectarianism. This was done under the leadership of men like Henry Kurtz, who founded and edited our first church paper. The distinctive dress began to disappear. English replaced German in the services of the brethren. Sunday schools, salaried ministers, and foreign missions came into the picture. And with all these changes, the brethren discovered higher education. Starting during the Civil War period, the brethren began to found schools. And they, we have currently six colleges and a theological seminary. And I'm pictured there with the muralist in his historical portrait. Well, how did the actual founding of Laverne come about? The closing decades of the 18th century was a boom time in California. The coming of the railroads linked the Pacific coast with the eastern markets and ended the period of cattle barons and adventures, but opened a new period of commercial and agricultural expansion, one phase of which was the uh, Orange Empire of uh, the Pomona and uh, San Gabriel Valleys. It's perhaps significant that uh, both Occidental and Stanford were founded in the same year as Laverne, and that many other of our uh, important institutions date from about the same time. In those early days, Lordsburg boasted enough hotel space to, well, house its entire population. And that came about because uh, the promoters figured that this pleasant halfway place would become the largest metropolis between San Bernardino and Los Angeles. It out to be a bust. The Lordsburg Land and Hotel Company looked around for somebody to buy an empty hotel. They find president and is again an active member of the college staff as an assistant in church relations. The first Bachelor of Arts was granted the next year to P.J. Wiebe, of whom the yearbook says, Though the graduating class consists of but one member, it is a large one. <laughs> Tell me, Dr. Davis, uh, just what were the problems facing the college, say, right up through the First World War? Well, during the early period, the primary struggle was to get higher education recognized as a normal part of the church's outreach program, as a normal experience for its young people. It took a while to win that recognition. But by the end of this period, Laverne had won its place as a viable institution. Well, just what was it that Laverne was able in particular to contribute to the world? The dominant emphasis throughout our 70 years has been whatever your occupation, it should be regarded as a ministry of service. A major educational contribution has been the training of teachers for our public schools. And in that work, Laverne's philosophy has perhaps been nowhere better expressed than in 1900, or in uh, 1856, by uh, Henry Kurtz, the first proponent of higher education in the Church of the Brethren. He said, we need something more than teachers of spelling, reading, and so forth for our children. We need Christian teachers, God-fearing men who love the Bible and will inspire our children with love for the same and thus make them good citizens, good neighbors, and better still, good Christians. Well, amen to that. Thank you very much, Dr. Davis. Now, the college really began to expand as a liberal arts institution during the period between the Great World War and the Great Depression, roughly in the 20s. J. Onus Leonard, who is the director of public relations and assistant to the president at the college ever since 1948. Is he with us tonight? Now, Oni, uh, when was, you were actually a student at the college way back in those days, weren't you? Yes, Don. I had the privilege of attending the academy in the year 1921 and 22. This was my freshman year in high school. Then I left there and finished in a public high school and returned again in the 20s to the college. Well, just what was going on in those days, Oni? 
Well, those were exciting days and boom days for the college, really. But I'd like to answer your question by showing you some old movies that we dug out of the archives the other day. These films were taken about 1925 to 27 by Dr. Ellis M. Studebaker, who was president of the college at that time. I want to tell you that we're running the original old films. So let's hope we get through without a breakdown. <laughs> the old hotel building, which had housed the college from the beginning, could no longer stand the gas. As the new buildings were built, the campus moved a block to the west. The first of our present buildings, Miller Hall, was a women's dormitory occupied in 1918, named after one of the college presidents, Dr. S. J. Miller. The next building was the gymnasium and the football field in 1921. On a good clear day, you can still see the L on the mountains north of Laverne. George Hollenberg, the class of 21, had the idea for this letter, billed as the largest in existence. In fact, it is over 300 feet from the top 27. After this, the old hotel came down, only now a shrine of memory. Some of the leap to the bottom. The climax and conclusion of this period, of it was occupied in the fall of 26 and dedicated during a driving rainstorm on February the 13th, 1920. And here's our men's dormitory, his name. And that's Dr. Studebaker during his 15 year term as president. He got someone to hold a camera for him, of course, on this shot. And then Don Campers, our new library was named after this great man, longtime dean of the college. And I'm sure you recognize this veteran camper. You just talked with him. Let's see Ernest Day. The classes were getting larger. The faculty as well as the campus was expanding. And Laverne College was taking its place among the institutions of higher learning in Southern California. Well, only we see a lot of people talking and discussing things in these old films of yours. Just what were they talking about in those days? Well, I had difficulty remembering even then, and that's been a long time ago. And since I was only a student, perhaps it would be better to call on a man whom I'm sure can uh, comment on the intellectual thinking of the institution in that day better than I. Dr. George Hollenberg, who was uh, a Laverne graduate, 1921, Professor of Biology at Laverne from 1924 to 1939, and now a member of the faculty at the University of Redlands. Dr. Hollenberg? Well, that sounds just like the man we're looking for. Dr. Hollenberg, just what were the intellectual issues of the 20s? Oh, moral question of the church, and uh, perhaps outstanding, the controversy between uh, science and religion as it relates to the, that long-worn problem of evolution. <coughs> well, uh, how did that... Uh, take place? I mean, in what form did this discussion, this controversy take? Well, the outstanding uh, symbol of this was the uh, Scopes trial at uh, Dayton, Tennessee in 1925. And uh, <coughs> here is John Scopes, high school biology teacher in Dayton, who decided to test the, the Tennessee law prohibiting teaching evolution. He was arrested and indicted, of course, and shown on the right is Clarence Darrow, noted attorney for the defense. <coughs> and shortly we will see William Jennings Bryan, who was a noted politician and orator of the day, who was the prosecuting attorney. There's Bryan. There's Bryan. It was a nationally publicized trial, and Scopes was, of course, found guilty. But, Doctor, this all happened about 2,000 miles from Laverne. Now, what did this have to do with the situation at your college? Well, uh, there was, of course, the misgiving in the minds of some people. But fortunately, the, the church leaders, at least most of them, and uh, the college uh, administrators and the uh, trustees were men of broad vision. And uh, they began to appreciate the fact uh, that perhaps, after all, the evolutionary concept was uh, a, a more reasonable and perhaps even a more beautiful explanation of creation 
than was first anticipated. And perhaps uh, Lacan's view was an important contribution. But it's a nobler concept of a creator who is the cause, who causes the cause of events than one who merely causes the events. Dr. Hallenberg, we appreciate that sentiment very, very much, those ideas, and we thank you for being here, and only we thank you too, and especially thank you for those wonderful old movies. Now, the period of growth that started at the turn of the century and continued right on through the First World War and during the Roaring Twenties suddenly came to an abrupt halt, just at the time when this entire country came to an abrupt halt. Of course, that was in 1929. Now, the challenge facing the college then was not to expand, not to grow, but just to exist. And troubles time trouble time persisted right through the economic adjustments of Roosevelt's New Deal. Now, with the failure of the League of Nations, our immediate problems were no longer those in our own backyard, but other people in the rest of the world were beginning to force our destiny. Now, as someone who is an authority in those times, we have here tonight Dr. Gladys Moore, who was at the college between 1916 and 1948 as mostly a professor of history. Now, Dr. Moore, how did the college react to these terribly mixed up and, and uh, oh, violent times? Well, one of the effects was to widen the horizon of the students as their attention was focused on the International Students Club in 1931. And shortly afterward, for the first time, a course in international relations was given in the college curriculum. Well, that's a wonderful thing, but what about the Depression? How did they react to that? Well, the effects were not so desirable. As members of the constituency were affected by the Depression, they were less able to contribute to the support of the college. For a number of years, teachers' contracts guaranteed only a certain percentage of the stated salary. Student enrollment fell, and the building program stopped. For about 20 years after the building of Founders Hall, there was no major construction on the campus of Laverne. Well, that is really must have been very horrifying times, but the proof that Laverne College has been able to survive these times is right here with us tonight, because we have the present president of Laverne College, Dr. Harold Fosnack, who has been president since 1948. Dr. Fosnack, now, we've been sitting here tonight, and we've been seeing old films and meeting very interesting people telling us about the history of the College of Laverne. Now, I guess it falls to you to tell us about the present program of the college and its future. That must be a fascinating thing. Well, Don, this is exciting. Even though history is exciting, it's always more thrilling to look ahead and realize that the college will have many more years to come, and uh, colleges like Laverne, Laverne included, are planning to meet the challenges of the future, the dynamic of the liberal arts will grow with uh, the times, and I'm sure that Laverne, in building new buildings, in developing program, will uh, be alert to the needs of uh, the days to come. Well, do you think Laverne's emphasis uh, in this changing world will change, too? Oh, I think so, Don. Uh, certainly, we'll try to meet uh, the uh, demands of the time because uh, of the dynamic of the liberal arts. This is a terrific challenge. And I think the liberal arts colleges are ready for it. Well, we have tried to review here today in a very short time the events, the people, all of them important and cherished and colorful that have helped make Laverne a college that is wonderful to see and have helped it to uh, reach this its 70th anniversary. <laughs>
Laverne College is one of the 12 members of the independent colleges of Southern California. Each institution in this organization is a liberal arts college, small enough to assure personal attention, yet large enough to stimulate broad basic learning in the major fields of man's endeavor. The independent colleges of Southern California was formed to enable industry to provide support to non-tax supported schools. Gifts made to the association are used to raise faculty salaries, give scholarships, and help the colleges prepare for the needs of the future. For more information about the independent college organization, write Mr. Willard Young, the Independent Colleges of Southern California, 325 West 8th Street, Los Angeles 14. Next week on College Report, the Claremont Graduate School presents Let's Bring Back Our Heroes, a penetrating look at American history and Americanism. Motion picture film of the Laverne campus, courtesy Bob Richards. Photographer, Don Heath. Still picture animation filmed by Bob Costa.